started with the Kilo Board of Education regular meeting for October 27th. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provision of the Act, the Kinlaw Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published in the Suburban Trends on March 13, 2022, posted in the Kinlaw Public Library, filed with the Borough Clerk, and posted on the district website. Ms. Keene, will you call the board, please? Ms. Jonas? Mr. Eisenmanger? Mrs. Fishback? Here. Mr. Giganti? Ms. Perella? Here. Mr. Petroselli? Here. And Mrs. Bounds? Here. Closed session. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act permits a public body to meet closed session to discuss certain matters, and whereas that said law requires the board to adopt a resolution at a public meeting before it can meet such an executive or private session, be it resolved that the Kinola Board of Ed did meet in closed session at 6.30 this morning to discuss, or this evening to discuss a legal matter. Therefore, be it resolved that the Kinola Board of Ed Education reserves the right to discuss other matters, and be it further resolved that the minutes of this closed session will be made public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Joel, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Routine matters, approval of the minutes for September 8th, work session, September 8th, executive session, September 22nd, regular meeting minutes, September 28th, executive session, and then the September 28th, special meeting minutes. I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Okay, seeing no discussion, Ms. Keene, will you pull the board, please? Mrs. Fishback? Yes. Mrs. Perilla? Yes. Mr. Petroselli? Yes. And Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Student representative, Christine? Hi, so we've had a lot going on in the past couple weeks. We had a great spirit week, including the Dick Pink volleyball game to support breast cancer and raised over $3,000. We also had our homecoming done Saturday, dance on Saturday. Thank you to the HSA and all the chaperones. We also had a part of spirit week was where we collected food donations and the raised competed to see how many they could get. And we got a great amount of donations donated to the food pantry. We're also having an open house here at KHS for 8th grade students and new students on November 3rd. Um, aside from this, there have been some issues that are um, through the students at KHS. Um, there's been continued issues each morning with student parking and parents dropping off students. They have found it difficult to safely navigate their way through the parking lot. And because of this, in the long line of morning drop-offs, there's been an increase in waits. So many students, including those on the executive board, have found it unfair for students to receive place when they arrive on time, but they are only a few minutes late because of the long line they have to wait in. And then also we have students um, interested in having a ski club here at KHS, so we're currently working on that. Would you say ski club? Ski club. Yeah, you should work on that. I know you have three tests tomorrow, so you're welcome to leave at any, if you want to go now, you can. Do you want to leave now, you can? Okay, all right. Superintendent Dave. Okay, thank you, President Donaldson. And uh, first and foremost, Christina, thank you for that report. And one thing I noticed that we were missing, because a lot of that came out of our student council luncheon, which I'd like to thank Mr. Suda and Mrs. Savio for putting together in such a quick time, was the powder puff game. So we're looking at that as well, bringing the Power Puff game here. Uh, today I had the pleasure of meeting with Mr. Mongan and Mrs. Jesko and Mrs. Okay, names. I'm only four days on the position. Uh, Mr. Mong, you want to help me out with a second? Mrs. Cromwell, yes, thank you. And um, we met with the student council. It was another productive meeting here at the middle school, and they too talked about Power Puff and some ideas, and, and our advisors are, are already on the move to bringing items back that were lost during COVID. That's been for a few years now. So um, for our folks who are attending here tonight, part of what I do is meet with the student councils in the middle school and high school monthly. 
and we bring ideas and programs to the Board of Education, so it gives them that vocal piece in between that joint in the middle. So thank you again for welcoming me, and thank you to the middle school, Mr. Ronnie. Um, I'd also like to thank Dr. Rashika, and I know we're, we're going to talk more about that in the uh, in next month, but uh, as a colleague and as a professional, as a parent and a taxpayer, when the board, when this position became vacant, my concern in all those positions was, who, who are we hiring? And uh, I do know who is out there, and Dr. Rashida came in, and for four months straight, he worked, and he worked solidly with the board and the community. So for that, I want to just put that out there and thank him. I know it's not the official, but still, uh, I wanted to thank him. So under my report tonight, you'll see there's several reports, but the first and foremost, because of the time frame of my land here and my official start, is a brief presentation. So I promise not to bore you, just like I shared in the video. I promise it would not go past 30 minutes max. So. Right now, I'm going to get up and we'll start. with our facilities. 
to one of our schools, we were forever fixing roofs. And that happened, for those of you here who are homeowners like me, you understand that that never goes away. So we were fixing them and fixing them, and then finally we had debt service that was about to roll off. And we used our community committee, which I know Mrs. Perella steers here in our school district, as a platform to engage all our stakeholders, make videos, and we put it out to our community why we needed a new roof on our one elementary school complete, finish the roof projects in the middle school and the high school, and upgrade the electrical in the high school and middle school. And we took tours, we showed videos, we engaged all levels, and it passed in Warren County three to one. So anybody here who knows anything about Warren County and how hard it is to pass a vote, three to one. So that's one. So as we tour and we look at our facilities and upgrades, and I'll get into that as we go on, um, you never know what comes forward. The next one is I alter facilities. Okay, so when I notice or identify an issue or a problem, we have to engage it. So um, along the way, I look for a feasibility study. I conducted three demographic studies. I'll look to do the same here as to our enrollment and consistency in working with Mrs. Keene and her office. And in Hackettstown, ultimately, it led us down a road of extending and building on for our enrollment. And in Great Meadows, while I was there, we actually closed the school and condensed into one campus. Because financially, that was the only solution based on our numbers and our demographics going down and S2 from the state taking the state aid. It just couldn't work anymore. Before Hackettstown, we didn't have a Hall of Fame. We had 100 years of success, but no Hall of Fame. And a lot of school districts, K-12, that's what they had. And so we created a Hall of Fame. We built a Hall of Fame wing. We built a section for the Booster Club. And now that's an annual reoccurrence in, in honoring our folks. And they come to the homecoming game, and they're called out on, on the football field at night. And it all goes back together community, sports, athletics together. And I'm sharing just small snapshots to give you an idea of broad strokes, so I touch all that right? Because I don't want <coughs> any rock on turn. Security, before it became an initiative, was something that I've always believed in, and it was something that I implemented in Beckton Regional High School as a principal and then superintendent, brought it to Hackettstown and Great Meadows, and I look to do the same here. I know that we have Mr. Shivis in our um, our school resource officers are doing a tremendous job, but security is something that never goes away. It's forever, and it's fluid, and it changes. And um, my skill set lies there as well. But from interior to exterior, it's something I'm always looking at. We never had pre-K inclusive, and for folks that may not know, who are special needs, but also our gen ed, you can split classes. And that's full day or half day offerings. We never had it. I built two wings for that in both elementary school districts. So that Special Olympics Unified Sports, and that's that's a little rare. It doesn't happen everywhere, but I believe in it. That is my background, and I was a special ed coach, a Special Olympic coach in Jersey City Public Schools. So that's something later on, as time evolves, I'll engage our stakeholders and our parents and our community. But the one that I am most proud of is the last one. And that was during the 2021 year when COVID was really in vogue in Hackettstown. Our K-8, we were five days a week operating on three different schedules. Our teachers couldn't ask for anything more. And that was six feet social distancing. That was, you know, what's a close contact, the finding club. We were there five days a week. Okay, the high school was a little bit different because of six feet and almost a thousand students, as you can imagine. I mean, here in, in Kinalong, we have 543 in the high school, so I almost had that double. So it was a much bigger challenge for me there. But that one right there, not just like so many other school districts putting their hands up and saying, hey, I'm going away, and that's that. We live streamed it for our students who had COVID or couldn't make it or they were close contact, and it was nonstop. So that one, above all, because that took, that truly took the village, and that's my philosophy. Okay, so I don't want to share that with you. I'm not patting myself on the back. I don't believe in just enjoying your accomplishments. That's for retirement. So if something you'll come to find about me is that I'm not very complacent. I'm always looking, how can we do better? What can we do better? What did we miss? 
That's just the type of person I am and how I was raised. My philosophy is this, like a puzzle. And it involves everybody in this room. It's not just me. And it's not just the board. You elect the board. The board hires me to do the job. It's my job to make sure that our organizational chart, everybody in that organizational chart does everything they need to do in attaining district goals, which are annual. And that's how I'm about it. And that comes to way. Some of those district goals are board created and admin created and staff created. And then some of them come from the community. So during the community relations committees and the citizens advisory, that's a little bit new for me, but hey, I'm flexible. I will ask, what, what would you like to say? What do you think we need? Because I'm that bridge between you and the board. The very back. So I don't want anybody to be shy when they think when they're in these community committee meetings to not share information. Please do. Now I'm only here five years. My family moved here five years ago. So some of you I know have been here much longer than that. You have the background. I don't. I know we moved here for the school specific. As parents, I can tell you that. So I have to imagine many families that have migrated <coughs> here like mine with children. That's why you're coming. 